Hello, Podcast Village. Welcome to Colorblind Race Across Generations. I'm your host, Vanessa Eccles, TV journalist by trade, podcast host by A Calling from On High, along with producer Keith. Hello. Do you like my new title? Yeah. Calling yeah. from On High. Is I like it, how that sounds. That's what it says on your business card, too, right? It will pretty soon. Before we talk about today's episode, you have some housekeeping measures. Uh, I just want to let everyone know uh, that we are going to, we have a schedule now, we believe. We're going to try to do two podcasts and then take a week off and then two podcasts again. So as always, follow us on social media and we will update you when we have a new podcast coming out. And we're going to stick to every Friday. You'll have a new one in your subscription feed. Because that will give you something to talk about over the weekend with your family and friends. Hey, everyone, let's talk about race Woo! over Sunday dinner. Yeah. So today's episode, we have, it's Ladies Day at the podcast. So, Producer Keith, you felt right at home surrounded by all of these dynamic women, right? Yes. Good answer. We talked about what are you in terms of race, ethnicity, get that question people what are you exactly we talked about an event that was held last year in Georgia called come meet a black person but we talked about it from the larger issue of connecting with people getting to know people who don't look like you and then we close with a drum roll please racist promposal now I gotta add a drum roll well yeah maybe so (laughs) so our guest today great panel Jackie Hirsch who is the CEO of Healing Butterfly Great Tea Company, Matcha Tea, and Jane Alagano, Community Relations for a group called Team True Entertainment Marketing, and Maria Elena Perez, MEP Realty Investments. She's the broker slash owner slash founder. She runs the show. So great panel. We're going to jump right in it. So here we go. Colorblind Race Across Generations. It is Ladies Day. Hello again, Podcast Village. As I mentioned, it is Ladies' Day here on the podcast today, so we have a great panel. Let's just dive right into this. The first thing we're going to talk about is this whole idea of what are you when you meet people and they're trying to figure out who you are and what you are. Jackie Hirsch. Yes. So you and I had a conversation, and you mentioned that you were Asian. Or you were Chinese specifically, <laughs> and I was like, I have known this woman for several years, and yeah, she's not Chinese. So tell me all about that because if someone saw you, they would see this lovely woman that they're like, she's a lovely white woman. She is not Chinese. So how do you get to the point where you're Chinese? So you know, when you mentioned that you were doing this podcast, I was fascinated, and I immediately opened up and started asking questions. I almost felt too many questions. It goes back. A couple generations. My grandmother was born in China. My dad was born in China. My dad came to America speaking Chinese and Russian. So I'm first generation American on that side. And of course, my mom is part German, part Russian, kind of in the Prussia area, which is typical for Eastern European Jews, where it was just kind of a mix. And we're Jewish. So there's always this piece of me that feels a little bit Asian, because we grew up eating lots of Chinese food, My dad loves Chinese food. My mom loves Chinese food. And we grew up, you know, going to California all the time. So it didn't really occur to me that I would check the white box. But people here in Florida, they just think I'm Hispanic. So you have all kind of things going on. All sorts of stuff. It's really interesting. So this idea of being Chinese really is about what you feel connected to more so than... I'm Chinese because my parents are Chinese. You just feel connected to the fact that your history goes back to China. I definitely feel connected. I definitely like a lot of the Asian things, specifically Chinese things, but I've always enjoyed that. And it was always just something fun. I don't know if I could see myself living in Shanghai, although the city is completely engaging and I, it, it's so amazing. But it's just never really been in my mind that I completely fit in as a white American. I think it's more that. A lot of that. Yes. So Maria Elena Perez. So when people look at you and they're like, well, what are you exactly? Because, you know, there's still some people who have this notion of everyone who speaks Spanish is Mexican. 
Or Puerto Rican if you're in Orlando. Okay. <laughs> or so, Cuban if you're in Miami. <laughs> so for you, the question, what are you? Thank you, Vanessa. Um, I am Colombian. I was born in Colombia, raised in South Florida. Um, I'm Colombian, and I'm an American, too. So for the question when people are like, well, what exactly are you? Colombian. That's your, your simple answer. Yeah. So have you, at any point in your life, struggled with, well, exactly, what am I, how do I describe what I am? So being raised in South Florida, I did not question that at all. Um, when I moved to Orlando 12 years ago, it's when I felt different. Yeah. Only because society in this town, it's, um, they categorize you right away. And in South Florida, I really, because I was raised there, I, I'm, I'm an American citizen. But here, you immediately get categorized as a Latin, which I am, right? But I, I never had those questions out in South Florida, but I did here, where I got a little bit more, not confused, but I started thinking about more of what am I? Because if, if I'm surrounded by Colombians, they think I'm really American. But if I'm surrounded with an American group, I'm really Latin. So at the end, it's you get categorized. That's what it is. This whole idea of exactly where do I fit? Right. And why do I have to fit anywhere, really, specifically? Mm. So Jane Alagano, <laughs> you and I talk about this a lot. All the time. <laughs> this whole notion of what am I? Right. Um, for me, I, I was raised here. I, I came here when I was four, so I only know American culture from preschool through college through um, my adult life. And, um, but it's funny when I do hear that question, I actually throw it back to them like, well, what do you mean by that? Because I, I'm human like you, um, have an American education like you, most people I interact with. If you want to be specific, I'm like, where's your family from? I, I kind of open up a little bit more to that because it's not, it's more engaging as to tell me about your history, your background, your heritage, and not just what are you. And it, it comes a little bit more aggressive in that way. When, And then you answer just, what do, what do you want to hear, you know? Um, me, myself, I've always identified myself as an American that is Filipino. Um, my family's from the Philippines. I, I was born there. I came here when I was four. Um, we actually did talk about this. I didn't realize I was a little bit different until I got my citizenship when I was 19. So here I am, four through grade school, got into UCF college, and um, didn't think I was a slightly different from everyone else, but it's a difference that citizenship is actually holds a lot of weight um, and, and does make you stand out a little bit different than you know your fellow classmate that has been here or someone who was born here. Um, you do feel a sense of a different identity in that. Um, but for the most part, I, I'm proud to say this is the face of an American in 2018. So is it an offensive question because some people may be asking just because they're curious like oh like what are you not meaning it in an offensive way but is it an offensive question um it depends how that conversation i think leads up to it um i think it's if you what are you what do you mean by that you know you could be a dancer a poet um a student um an owner of a company, what do you mean by that? The fact that you automatically want to go and ask what race you are, what ethnicity you are, um, not that that's offensive, but it's an, it, I think it's, it's a strong way to ask somebody, where are you from? What's your heritage? Where that is kind of more of a milder tone, tell me about your family, tell me how you grew up, um, what's your culture like? So is, it really is the tone issue. I think so. More so than, what are you? as opposed to, oh, tell me about your culture, tell me about your history, tell me about your parents, that kind of thing. Yes, where's your family from? Jackie, do you find it an offensive question? I don't find it offensive, but I find that when I give the answer, where are you from? I'm from Orlando. 
And they say, no, no, where are you really from? And I'll say, well, okay, I'm really from Maitland. That's also not an acceptable <laughs> answer, which for those so of for, you who don't know. I was going to say, for people who mm-hmm. are not in the state of Florida, Maitland and Orlando, it, she can. Yeah, you can throw a rock and hit exactly. Orlando, yes. Yeah. So um, then they say, well, where, where are your parents from? So then I have to go into it, and I'll say, well, my dad's from China, and my mom's from Wisconsin. And then that just kind of blows their mind because I just don't look either. I don't look Midwestern. I don't look Chinese. And then it gets a lot more questions. But I usually don't always come out and say, well, my family, they're Jewish from either side. I just kind of let that go because that's a whole other polarizing topic possibly. And I usually just kind of want to blend in and just kind of do my thing. So, Jackie, your big thing is this whole, what box do I check? Yeah. And tell the audience about, you went to, I think it was the doctor, and you refused to fill it out. Like So, I, you know, you're at the doctor, you're everywhere, you know, and there's this box that you're supposed to check, and they're so limiting, and I don't feel like any of them belong to me, or you know, your your different places. Or when I was telling you when I took the SAT, they ask if you're Jewish. And I took the SAT six times. So I'm like, oh, this is going to make the Jewish population look terrible. They'll be like, oh, the Jews have an idiot over here. You know, I didn't want to be that person either. So I just never really liked checking the box. And I feel like the box is so limiting for me. And it must be limiting for others. I told you about that one situation. I don't know if you want to talk about that either. but Go ahead. So I guess what really brought this up when I started talking to you was there was somebody I know who's an Eastern European Jew whose family was born, whose parents were born in Cuba. They were then born in Miami. And then they now have a child and they don't teach the child Spanish, but they check the Hispanic box. And so it just made me think, well, I'm more Chinese than this person's Hispanic. Should I be checking the Chinese box? Not that I think that's my box either, but I just really started to wonder, why do we have these boxes? Maria Elena, I see you nodding over there. (laughs) This whole idea of where do you fit in, what box do you check? It can be broad, it can be a narrow box. What what are you thinking? So I already mentioned that I'm Colombian, but um, most of the times I, I, I also dislike the fact that you have to check a box. Like you said, we're all humans. We all, you know, have the same wants or similar wants and needs. Um, but if I'm put in a position to check a box, I want to check Caucasian because I feel white. But I'm Latin. And when the options are Hispanic, um, I have a problem with that because Hispanic is not a race. Um, so, because I'm Latin, I'll check Latin, but my, I always tend to go to want to check occasion. Um, and it's funny because I just had a conversation with a friend of mine, um, just this past weekend. He was born in Pittsburgh. He is Brazilian. Um, his background is Brazilian. He does a lot of business in Brazil, so he's, he's, he's Brazilian in my eyes. And um, he was sharing with me that there was a time when, where he had to check a box, and he did it. And he wrote, human race. Well, the attendant came back and said, no, you, that's, not, that's not one of the options. You have to pick one. You have to, you ha- you have to choose one. And he refused. He refused. I'm, I'm human race. That's, what, that's, that's all he wanted to check. So um, it is, you know, at the end, we're all the same. It's just, I don't know why we're giving choices. And when people hear that, will hear you say that you feel white. What does that mean exactly? Um, so it, what it means is the color of my skin, which I'm pretty tan right now, right? But that really what, that's really what it is, what it means to me, the color of my skin. That's it. So you don't feel that that is like denying heritage or ethnicity or anything like that? I do not, no. No, I don't feel that way. Again, I, it, for me, it's just the color of, of my skin. Now, going back to this friend that we were having this conversation and he refused to check a box, he did say, and again, he's Brazilian, he did say, 
if I had to check a box, I will check occasion. So, ladies, Jane, when you hear that, what are you thinking? <laughs> you know, interesting enough, I think um, growing up, filling out paperwork, college applications and even paperwork towards our citizenship, it's interesting on some applications you just get like four races or four options, and then you go to another set of paperwork and you've got like eight to ten. So one that I struggled with, you know, when my parents weren't around, do I pick Asian or Pacific Islander? Because I'm, I'm, I'm from the Philippines, so we are technically an island in the Pacific, but it's also part of Asia. Like, how confusing can that be for a 14, 15 year old who's told, here, take this paperwork, fill it out, bring it back to school? Um, and then explain that, and then have my parents also try to figure that out with us, because this is paperwork or forms or whatnot. Um, so I guess I identified with both, um, but I didn't understand such a difference. You know, Asia is probably the most multicultural continent. You have Russia, you have the Middle East, you have the Southeast, um, you have Polynesia. And um, I guess growing up, when we come back to the box thing, it's hard to explain, understand race when you are not white or not black or you are really from another country. Um, to me, I look at it more of a culture. What's, cultural and heritage and if you want to get down to it check the country of the box you're from and I will be more identifiable to that than a group of Asians or a group of Pacific Islanders um, because I it's so much more easier to rep where I'm from which is the Philippines. So we have come a long way from when forms long ago <laughs> would say black white and other. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it, is, it, would, it would just be those three categories. There's probably mm -hmm. 10 boxes now I'd like to see. <laughs> and, and the list is growing. Mm -hmm. So let's move into something that uh, we talk about a lot when I have conversations with friends when we talk about race, and that is when you describe a person, is race the first thing that comes to mind? If someone says, well, tell me what happened, who'd you see today? And it's like, oh, who brought the package in today? It was the black man in the blue shirt. It was the the tall black man. Why not just the man? Does it just is it just a natural part of how we describe people? Is that good? Is it bad? Is it just what is it? Um, I'll take that one first. Um, for me, not for me. I don't immediately. I think I go by male or female first, um, and then to my perspective, maybe an older male or female, um, or a student, or someone who's a teenager. Um, and then if I have to get to it, then I'll describe them. I don't think I naturally tend to say a specific race, it was a white woman or a black man. Um, it was funny though, because I did stay with some friends this weekend, and they are, they are a Caucasian couple. And I've never met my friend's boyfriend, and he's like, well, describe her to me, describe me. And she actually did just tried to describe who I was, and I don't think she actually knew I was Filipino. But then again, she didn't. That's not her tendency either to go to race, but understand that she's she has exotic features, and I'm not white. Um, and um, but that is funny that I it is common. Yeah, they want to know. They want to picture that person, and and race or um, a visual of that is probably what people are questioning or intrigued by. So how did she describe you? What did she say? Um, I think she was trying. I'm trying to remember. I Because I don't think she knew I was Filipino, <laughs> which um, maybe I should do a better job at explaining where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she just said, oh, my, my friend, she's young. She does yoga. She's coming down. And then I think she may have just showed, showed him a photo. And then she's like, oh, where's she from? Curious as to see that. Um, maybe I am from another country or whatnot. And it's probably the, the depth of it, but you know, it's funny that you do bring up this very question because he, he was intrigued by my race, I assume, or my ethnicity. Jackie? Well, you know, there's a difference between ethnicity and race, in my opinion. And I think when you describe people, I sometimes describe just 
other things. I'm a very small person, so I describe if they're big, like if they're tall, if they're small, if they're old, if they're young, like that's kind of my thing. Or if they're from a very specific place, like you know, like if somebody was a New Yorker, I might say, oh, well, this New Yorker was here, right? Because they stand out in Orlando. You know, sometimes you know if people are from other places or, you know, you could tell this lady was, you know, not from here and didn't know how things go here. So I think I describe people that way, um, more how they are. Like what is their kind of aura that they're projecting and how you feel when they walk in the room? Like if it's coarse or if it's soft. We talk about this a lot in the whole world of journalism from the standpoint of when we describe suspects Mm. to say the suspect was a black man in his 30s. And so my response is always, well, let me just round up uh, 10 of my relatives because some of them are black men in their 30s. Like that's (laughs) not a description. And so I think from that standpoint, that's a big issue for for some people, Mm -hmm. for a lot of people. You know, that's not a description. You know, is is the person tall? Is the person short? Does the person have a scar? Does it, you know, mm-hmm. but simply saying that, that could be a lot of people in America. Right. A tall black man or a short black man or whatever, or a black man in his 30s. Your thoughts, Maria Elena? If I may, I may, may, if I may add to what you just said, but it also, it's a lot of people in America, but it could also narrow it down because at least you know that, you know, they're not white. So the way I see... Or it's not a woman. Right. Yes. So the way I always um, also identify people by either female or male. So let's say that someone dropped a package in my building, right? And, and, and someone will say, who, who dropped the package? I'll say, the FedEx guy. And then, but if I'm, if I'm asked more questions, then I'll be more, more specific. Um, now... I'm, My point is, are you starting with the black FedEx guy? I'm not. No. I'm definitely not. Not at all. So it's the FedEx guy, and then it's, well, what did he look like? What was he wearing? Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Or um, if there's, is, you know, using um, FedEx as an example, sometimes they have a morning, sh- you know, peop- you know, drivers that deliver packages during the morning and other drivers during the, the afternoon. If for some reason you wanted to see the other driver, you ask, oh, was it the, the white guy or the black driver? So it all depends on, on, on the question, how, how I answer it. But I usually do answer it by female or male. I think sometimes it also makes people a little uncomfortable when they're describing people in whatever the situation is. Because sometimes if you have conversations with people, it's like, well, what did he look like? Um, well, he was tall. What else? Um, he had on a shirt. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Give me, well, it, you know. Absolutely. You can tell that they're yes. very uncomfortable. And I think we're also guarded on our perception on how we view someone. Even it's just like, I don't know. She had bad hair, kind of. You know, just we 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 filter our descriptions a little bit too. Um, and ethnicity or look or color is another thing, on top of other description lean not bulkier whatever it all I think kind of all goes with that as well which we all have to somewhat be kind of filtered aware of of, exactly you know I was in my yoga class and this I was talking to this lady and she said who's that guy you were talking to and I she said well you were laughing at all his jokes the Hispanic guy. And I, then I started to get kind of uncomfortable. Like, did it look like I'm married, right? Did it look like I was, <laughs> you know, really friendly with some other guy? And then I realized, that's my brother. <laughs> She's talking about my brother. I'm like, that's my brother. We're not Hispanic. Right. She and I get that all the time, Hispanic. right? But I was laughing at my brother, I think is pretty funny. So I do laugh at all of his jokes. And I know him very well. So I probably was standing close to him because... I've known him my whole life, and I'm really happy he does yoga. (laughs) So we talk about this often as well, which is what happens when you are in a situation and you are the only one? (laughs) And I'm looking at you, Shane, because... You had an experience oh, yes. uh, in college. Loved it. Tell us about that. Um, I got an opportunity to do a sales um, 
a sales program. This was um, a little close to the end of my uh, school year. And I was about to graduate, and I had this opportunity opportunity to go to FAMU. If um, listeners are not familiar with FAMU, is a historically black college here in Florida. Very, um, very big school, very well known. The Rattlers, for all the those Rat- people yes. know about FAMU. Yes, and so I went there, um, got the opportunity. Why? Because I was a minority, and I could apply. I didn't think too much that it was FAMU. I've, I knew it was a historically black college. I didn't know anything else, but like, you know what? I'm not doing anything for two weeks after the semester. I'm gonna take this opportunity. It's paid education, free, free lodging, free meals. Why not? Um, and so I went and um, <laughs> walked in on my first day of orientation and I was the only person not black. And um, it was a different experience in the sense of like, well, this is a different group um, that I'm not normally, I'm usually around a diverse group. Um, so to feel, I'm like, but then again, I've always been a minority. I've always been the only Filipino, the only Asian in a group of people as well. So I wasn't afraid of that. It was, it was a different experience for sure. Um, but when you walk in, it, is that the first thing you notice? You walk in the room and it's like, oh, there's no one here who looks like me. I'm in a room with all these black yes, people. Yes, that... I didn't think that. I, I felt, I walked in, I'm like, wow, I just feel different. <laughs> Not that who I was with made me feel that, but I just knew I, 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 they were all students at FAMU. So they all already were going to school together. So beyond that, I understood that I'm just the new girl in the group um, before race. But nonetheless, I had an amazing two weeks. I would do it again. Um, I got to know those friends um, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. We spent two weeks straight together. and um, But it was quite a fun experience, and I learned a lot culturally. It's the swag and surf, if everyone knows that, what that is. <laughs> um, and um, that made me stronger, knowing to walk into kind of any situation. Just know who you are. Um, know what your purpose is there. There, you're there for a reason. You're there because you wanted to take an opportunity, um, and never feel pressured by your surroundings like that. In any case, or be intimidated by um, your situation or, or what what's ahead. I think I I took it as an opportunity, and I'm glad I did. Jackie, you always say that you can walk into a room. And this may sound crazy, but you can spot if there are other Jewish people there. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> you can. You can look. And in Orlando, okay, so first let's break down the Jewish population. There's about 15 million Jews worldwide. Right. In Orlando, there might be 10,000, okay, out of about 2 million people. And my family refer- refers to them as hidden Jews, right? So everybody kind of blends. So you don't stand out that much. But, yeah, a lot of times... I'll go into a room or I'll go into an event and I'll be like, wow, there are no Jews here. Like, I'm it. I'm, and that's typical. And there's friends of mine and I know I'm their only Jewish friend. And I'm the only Jewish person they've ever known. And, you know, I've been to church with them. I've been, like, different places with them. I've been at family events. And, and I know and I feel the difference. But they don't always know. But I know that they have no idea that I'm thinking about it. So when you walk into the room, are you immediately walking in saying, like, let me survey to see if I see any Jewish people? There's one. Or do you just walk in the room and it's like, oh, okay, as, as, I, as the event goes on, hmm, I'm the only Jewish person here. Yeah, usually as, a, as the event goes on, I'll, I'll realize, like, there are no other Jews. Or, you know, and I guess, you know, you think you fit in somewhere, and so sometimes I feel like I fit in, but then I'll realize I don't. Just like when I mentioned I was in Vietnam and – All of a sudden, this heat and discussion happened, and I turned to my friend who's Vietnamese, and I said, what are they talking about? And she said, well, they're talking about the white person. So, of course, I turn around, and I start looking for this white person. And she's like, no, they're talking about you. You're the white person. And I didn't think of myself as the white person. I didn't realize that that was me. I just thought I was just another Asian hanging out in Vietnam. And so you're looking around for the white person. I'm looking for the white person. I don't see her. But it was me. So let's close out this 
particular segment with I have a friend who is one of those, I have a friend who has a friend, but I really do have a friend. <laughs> so she was working in a bank here in Florida, and she said everyone would always assume that she was Cuban. And so she said a couple came in one day and said, your English is so good. And she said, well, I would hope so. I was born in New York. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> so let's move on to, this is a great segue to their, our second topic, which is there was an event in Georgia last year, and it was called Come Meet a Black Person, organized by a woman who said she thought this was an opportunity for her to let people experience what it's like to meet black people, because there are people out there who perhaps have never seen black people before in terms of having a relationship with a real live black person. And so she put together this event, and she said it was a great success. And so what are your thoughts? Because when I first saw that, it sounded like, you know, a carnival barker. Step right up. See the black people. But she said it is all about just getting to know people on a personal level, and that is how you can understand other people, is by getting to know them. And she thought, well, here's a crazy idea. And the people who went said it was successful. Your thoughts, Maria Elena? Just the thought about it makes me feel uncomfortable. Why? Because I don't, unless I have to describe someone, I don't, I don't, I don't see color. I think, you know, you're, you're a human, you know, we have things in common, we could have conversations. So it does make me feel uncomfortable that it's almost like they put them in a box. Talking about the box again. Um, would I attend an event like that? Um, no, I wouldn't. I, 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 I wouldn't. I, um, to me, it maybe I, I don't know a lot about it and I don't understand it, but it's almost discriminating, in in, in my opinion. How so? Um, because is come meet black people, right? Yeah, I mean, so for example, Colombians, um, especially in South Florida, the day of the Ind Ind Independence Day, they have an Independence Day festival, right? Um, now I'm trying to think if, if, if it's the same thing, you know, it's, it's a Colombian festival, but it's different from saying your, national, uh, 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 your nationality than describing someone's race. And I think that's where people get confused. Yeah, she's saying her event that she had, though, was simply a chance for people to come together, to meet each other, and to talk, and maybe you do not interact with black people. So therefore, here was your chance to come together meet each other, ask questions. It's, because it's interesting you mentioned about not seeing color. A lot of people think that is just a farce, that we all see color. That if someone says to you, what color is Vanessa, you will know what color I am, that we see color. The point is just not to judge people in a negative way because of it. So Jane, when you hear that, <laughs> that event, you were smart, you know, podcast people can't see us, but you were really smiling when, when I mentioned the title. It was called Come Meet a Black Person. I think the idea, um, being young, growing up here, having many friends of different backgrounds, ethnicities, heritage, I think it's such a crazy idea to get together that way. Unfortunately, go talk to your neighbor. It's as simple as that. Um, get to know someone you know what my, if all your neighbors look like you though so i do see a lot of filipinos over the weekend <laughs> that's how i grew up um but then i go to school and i didn't see many people like me um and that's when i had to learn to can i borrow a pencil let's talk um that's a cute backpack where is it from um i think it comes down to you as a human being and engaging with thy neighbor and thy neighbor I mean anyone you come across with within arm distance you know my my friends joke about me um, I always talk to my uber driver <laughs> I always talk to them 
they have, especially if I hear someone of an accent, I do ask them, where are you from? I don't ask, what are you? I do ask, where are you from? And are you from, lo are you local to Denver, where I was traveling to? Um, and then we get in a conversation of where their hometown is in Russia or, or whatnot. And I, one thing I like to say I do is I like to learn hello and thank you in another person language. I think just getting engaged and stepping one step closer to them, reaching out and learning a little bit about them, is, and it could just be language. Um, you know, they'll in, in turn give you that, you know, twice fold and, and step up to you. Um, you know, I think an event like that is bold. And if it was a success, good for them. I, I hope both, both sides of the groups learn from it and hopefully do it naturally when they're out traveling. Um, I think I encourage people to travel and go outside your comfort zone and say hi to someone. Say, say hello to your Starbucks barista or um, someone in the grocery line when you're waiting in line and it's a busy day on Sunday. So you really do have to be intentional about forming relations. Absolutely. I think that was the point of what she was trying to do, yeah. whether you like it or not, but is the whole, the bigger picture is you have to be intentional about forming relationships with people who don't look like you. So why is, Jackie, if, if I say, why is that important? Your answer is? I think anything you want to do in life, you have to be intentional. But I think if you want to be a better citizen of the world and you want to really understand the universe, you have to learn about other people and you have to let them learn about you. I think that it's such a disservice that people don't interact with so many people. I think the event sounds, I think the title's small-minded. And that's what bothers me about it. I think it makes me sad if somebody said, oh, come meet Jackie, the Jewish person. That would make me sad because yeah. I feel like I have so much more to offer than just having this interesting thing about me, which I can't control. I was born that way. And so this person was also born that way. So I feel like this person must have something more interesting about them. And why wouldn't the party be come meet so-and-so who does such and such? And I think you'll find them very engaging. I think that that is how I would prefer it to be approached than come meet the Jewish person, come meet the black person, come meet the white person. I don't know. I just think it could be different. But what if someone says, I have always been curious about Jewish people, but I don't know any. Is yeah. that is that a I answer a lot like, of questions. Hey, uh, like what kind of questions do you just like, out of curiosity. Well, like who I think Jesus is and, you know, do I celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes, I'm American. I love Thanksgiving. And, you know, just all of these different things. So, yeah, we we answer all sorts of different questions. Um, and I think it's fun. I think when people ask questions, it shows that they're interested in learning something and leaving themselves. So I always try and answer and answer anything that they want to know. So does it have to be intentional, Maria, Elena, you think about reaching out to others, or does it just come naturally? Um, it has to be intentional, for sure. I also think that, um, I also think it depends where you're from and where you were raised, too. Because like I said it, I, when I, I, I was raised in South Florida, I lived there for 22 years. I was eight when, I, when, when my mom immigrated from Colombia to Miami. Um, this never came up, ever. So being in Miami, like these type of, of questions or situations will never come up because obviously Miami is, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's full of, um, of, of Latins. Um, it's the melting pot. So um, it does have to be intentional. Um, but I guess what I, what, again, what, what makes me feel uncomfortable is the labeling. Why label an event like that? Why label it? So you would just like it to say, come meet people? Yes, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, why label it? There's no need to. And it, that's the thing I sometimes bothers me about this society today. We give labels to everything. Everything has a label. There's no need for that. Not at all. Yeah. All right. So let's take a quick break. And we'll be back with our, this is a, a picture of the day. So we'll get your thoughts on that. We'll be right back. Podcast Village. So we wanted to take a quick break 
producer Keith and I to let you know that we need your help. We would like for you to engage with us. So we know that you love the podcast because you tell us that you do, but we need you to leave a comment for us and a stellar rating on iTunes, or you can connect with us on Facebook at Colorblind Podcast and follow us on Twitter at Colorblind Pod. Yeah, and the face snaps and the Insta books and uh, <laughs> everything else that See, you kids are into. I was trying to do a very serious, serious break here. But here we go. So now back to our panel talking about so many topics, race across generations here on Colorblind. Welcome back. So the, um, well, I'll, Sometimes I call it video of the day, even though you can't see it, or picture of the day, even though you can't see it. But this is a racist, racist, a racist promposal. Producer Keith is laughing because sometimes I just can't talk, so that's one of those. So this is a racist promposal, is what it's called. A young man in Florida. You may have heard about this. So he put on social media a picture of himself holding up a sign, and here's what the sign says. If I was black, which, by the way, is grammatically incorrect, but well, that's another discussion. So the sign said, if I was black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom. When you hear that, just tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Ignorant. Yeah. Yes. Just Ignorant. Feels sad. Yes. Just feel sad for the youth of America. I saw that photo. Um, I think I had to refresh my screen and double take. And first of all, promposals, what is that? I, I, it's another topic, but <laughs> it's a very aggressive way to <laughs> ask someone to prom. Um, who are his parents? How, how, it's one thing to do it and then post it. I mean, there were definitely steps that someone should have stopped him right there. I, I don't remember if it was balloons or a banner. Didn't someone who took the photo not read that and think, um, maybe you shouldn't post that photo? Um, I don't know if he thought it was funny. He did. He said he, he thought it was you know creative or funny and that he did not mean to offend anyone. And you mentioned the parents. The parents hired a PR firm, and they issued a statement you know, saying that clearly that's not how he was raised and... They were disappointed and they were apologizing to anyone who had been offended by what he said. I, there is very some completely insensitive. Um, curious to know who his friends are to not even think, is this not offensive? Um, and I, I feel for that young person because they are so young and, you know, I feel like a little too, the kids young these days are just not thinking of their future consequences. And now the story is shared, it is copied, it is paced, and it is all over the internet. And it is so hard to take that back. Everyone knows his name. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, okay, thanks for the apology. Um, I think his future karma, whatever, is, it's set out for him. Um, and I hope enough people talk about it and, and, and condemn this is completely inappropriate, insensitive, and completely wrong. When you first heard it, Maria Elena? I um, thought it was cruel, ignorant, and extremely disrespectful. You're right, who, who, who are the parents? Or I wonder, where did that come from? Like, what triggered that? Why would he even think of writing something like that. He was asking someone to the prom, right? Right. I don't, I don't understand it. So I, I do think it's, 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 it's cruel, it's cruelty, in, in my opinion. Jackie? Well, this goes on what we were talking about before. First of all, I'm always embarrassed because this always happens in Florida, right? I was going to say Florida. that, too. It's so embarrassing. Out of all places. It's just a, I just wish another the story Florians to add. could get it together. <laughs> but I do wonder... Um, if why he would choose that, why he would even go there, because that's not something that happens in today's society. So 
it's almost like he did it out of cruelty. Um, and you wonder not just what their his parents are doing and how they're you know living, but how he views himself. And then I also think how spoiled this child is, that they have no idea what people have to go through on a day-to-day basis around the world, like what their reality is. And his reality is is just doing stupid stuff and thinking it's funny. And it makes me sad. And I hope that that is the minority of the future of America. I really hope that's the minority. But and here in Florida as well. And here in Florida. We can only Yes. Hope. Ladies, this has been a great discussion. Every uh, podcast we close out with uh, our signature line, which is, when it comes to race, I admit, and you fill in the blank. So Jackie, we'll start with you. When it comes to race, I admit. I admit that we are all the same, but we've just taken a different path. And if we want to move forward in modern in the modern world, we have to get rid of the box. We have to stop checking a box. Jane, when it comes to race, I admit. I I admit it's a topic that will still continue to be um, talked about, and I think it has a very strong weight and importance um, on how we engage with one another. Um, and it's something we don't we shouldn't take lightly, but and um, but not heavy either. Um, we just kind of all have to meet and be intentional and and. Um, be open to one another um, and and see color more beautifully and not as a box, like Jackie said. Maria Elena, when it comes to race, I admit. I admit I have been ignorant by thinking race is the same as nationality. Wow. And you came to this revelation when? Today. And what about today? Has Because I knew we were having this conversation and I was thinking of the boxes you have to check, thinking that Hispanic is a race and it's not. So that made me think how ignorant I've been, you know, to, to you just categorize things or, or or most of us just get confused. It's, it's confusion. And I think that's why we have so many other problems. Um, so because I was thinking of our conversation today, that's how today I came up with that conclusion. And, and it's, um, it wasn't easy to admit it, but it's exactly what it is. So that's why I admit that I have been ignorant Till today, in this subject. <laughs> and now you're smart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Vanessa. <laughs> Ladies, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we have unpacked a lot, but it's all about, as I always say, getting the conversation started. So hopefully we'll continue the conversation and everyone in the podcast village will do so as well. So again, Podcast Village, our guest, thanks for joining us for Colorblind, Race Across Generations. Thank you again for listening to this week's episode of Colorblind, Race Across Generations. Don't forget to leave us a comment and a rating, stellar of course, on iTunes, or you can connect with us on Facebook, Colorblind Podcast, and also follow us on Twitter, at Colorblind Pod. Now, if you have any suggestions for topics you'd like to hear us address, let us know that as well. Say goodbye, Producer Keith. Goodbye, Producer Keith. <laughs> That's not what I meant. See ya.